Hey guys, Michael back here. Today I want to go over the reading practice test one, the comparison passages. Uh, these are the last uh, of the five passages. This is numbers. I think it must be like uh, up to 52, so 10 or 11, so 42 to 52, whatever it is. Um, so you can find that in your college board practice test one. The reason why I'm selecting this one is uh, one of my friends from Reddit, Galavanting Carrot number six, uh, who uh, has done the reading tests and told me that she got uh, three of those wrong, um, 48, 49, 51, which tells me, look, you, if you did the rest of this test perfectly, then you um, were just tired. So this is the last passage. There's a lot going on. It's 65 minutes to sit there and focus on dissecting text and it's not fun. So that's a really nice score, one. But two, you don't want to lose points just because you're tired at the end. So, but, but rather than just correcting 48, 49, 51, I want to just go ahead and do the entire comparison passage because I think that a lot of the comparison passages really takes understanding them, which you build that understanding through doing the entire um, uh, all the questions. It's really helpful. So let's see how this looks. So here we have practice test one. Here's the last passage. This is the uh, comparison. And first thing we do when we look at these things is we want to get what we can out of the title. So we have, I don't know who that is, whatever, passage one, space mining, the next gold rush, question mark. 2013, New Scientist, passage two, from the editors of New Scientist. Okay, so there's an article in the same magazine, 2013. So they're obviously taking two sides of a position and their title is Taming the Final Frontier, whatever the final frontier is. If you know what the final frontier is, we know that they're comparing one to, to another. So it's obviously about space mining and whatever the final frontier is, that's a um, my generation popular cultural reference, which you may not know. Uh, I can talk about that later, um, but I'm just assuming that you don't know that. So a lot of kids don't. But space mining uh, is uh, one is calling it possibly a gold rush. The other one is wants to tame it. You tame something by controlling it. So all right, let's see what happens here. Now, uh, as always, I want to scan the passage, uh, but I'm only going to scan passage one and I'm still going to look at the questions and go back and, and, and read the passage. But let's see what we got. Follow the money, end up in space. OK, that's the next gold rush. That's the message from its first of a kind form in mining beyond Earth. Convened in Sydney, blah, blah, blah. The form comes hot on the heels of unveiling of two asteroid mining firms. Within a few decades, these firms may be meeting earthly demands for precious metals. In this scenario, water mined from other worlds could become the most desired commodity. I guess you need water in space. Water and ice on the moon's poles could be sent to astronauts, blah, blah, blah. Companies are eyeing, eyeing the iron, silicon, and aluminum. Blah, blah, blah. OK, I want to read the end a little bit more carefully. So uh, companies are eyeing the iron, silicon, and aluminum and lunar soil and asteroids, which could be used in 3D printers to make spare parts or machinery. OK, uh, others want to turn space dirt into concrete for landing pads, shelters, and roads. So they're talking about all the things that they can do with stuff from space, the water and blah, blah, blah. All right, now <clears throat> notice here, I'm going to ignore this passage because I know that there are going to be questions about passage one and I don't want to bother confusing myself by reading passage two while I answer passage one questions. But I want to preview the questions about passage one here and also the comparison um, questions because there might be some information in them. So uh, typical question here mentioned several companies in 9 to 17. I want you to remember something about these passages. They do not have a thesis paragraph, OK? That says thesis paragraph. They don't do that. They put into the beginning of these things, they do background info, right? That's the way these passages work. So you start with background information, then you build the topics, right? You tell the story, explore it, blah, 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 and then you draw a conclusion. Um, now, this is a little news article, so I'm not sure the conclusion is really that helpful here, but I'm just seeing um, this got the idea that we're going to end up in space and mining, and these are all the things we're going to do in space, okay? So um, next one, the pa all right, here's some information. Passage one indicates that space mining could have a positive effect. All right. So there'll be some positive effect and that's going to be in evidence. I want to mark that to remind myself to go back to 44. The word demands means something. And then passage one here, there's a discussion of water on these lines 35 to 40. So I have to pay attention to 35 to 40 um, for 46. All right, now let's see what else. So then we got passage two. So I'm going to worry about that later. Uh, there's a relationship between the passages. Passage two would likely respond to the discussion of the future of space mining in lines 18 to 28. 
Um, so there's a discussion of the future of space mining in 18 to 28 in passage one. So I'm going to pay attention to that. And then there's evidence here. And then there's a point about resources that will be highly valued in space that is implicit in one. So I got to think about the resources that will be highly valued in space. Now let's go back and read this, keeping these questions in mind, and I'm going to bounce back and forth to them. All right, so I say to myself one more time, what what information I have from the questions? Well, I got there. Uh, I got to figure out the purpose of the first lines. Um, space mining could have a positive effect. We need to talk about the water and space, the word demands, and two things here, something about future space mining and resources it will be Value in the space is implicit. Let's read. Follow the money, end up in space, blah, blah, blah. Convenient in Sydney, blah, blah, blah. Already read that. Lunar robotic even brought together. All right, so we had some convention in Sydney. Da, da, da. The forum comes hot on the heels of the. So no, I know this is some type of language, hot on the heels. The title here is Space Mining the Next Gold Rush. So this, this person is all enthused about it. Unveiling of two private asteroid mining firms, blah, 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 says it will launch its professing cells in two years while Deep Space in Virginia hopes to be harvesting metals from asteroids. Another commercial. OK, so there's a all these firms are being launched right as um, they're being launched. And then there's some sort of Australian Center for Space Engineering Research is bringing together mining companies and robots. So this is kind of telling me the background of what's here. And uh, why would they mention these companies? Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and answer this. Note the technological advances. Uh, didn't tell me about their technological advances. Can't do that. Provide evidence of growing interest in space mining. Could be that, right? That's kind of the background information here. Emphasize large. No, they didn't talk about the money to be made. Highlight the diverse ways to carry out space mining. No, they're not talking about how to carry it out. So that's an easy elimination down to B is the only one that um, could make any possible sense. And that's typical. Again, like I said, this is background information and that's setting up the argument for, oh, let's rah, 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 let's go into space. Um, now, I don't know if I can answer this one yet. Um, and we're going to look for the evidence. Just keep an eye on the passive. When I see the evidence ones, I, I just want to take an eye at like, when is the evidence going to show up? So 18, it's pretty broad. So I really can't look for that too specifically, but let's go ahead and keep reading here. Um, so we, I did the another commercial venture, Golden Spike of Colorado, going to the moon, potential lunar miners. Within a few decades, these firms may be meeting earthly demands for precious metals such as platinum and gold and rare earth elements vital for personal electronics. So there was something about the resources. Resources will be highly valued in space. Okay, so that's talking about what will be valued in on Earth, I think. Right? Did it not say earthly resources? Maybe meeting earthly demands for pressure. Oh, wait, wasn't that a um? That was a uh, one of these questions, wasn't it? Right here, demands. Okay, so let's let's tear this apart. I'm not looking at these yet. I'm just going to try and figure out what that word demands is doing here. And always with vocab, I'm going to look at we're doing the word demand. So what demands? Earthly demands. That means demands that are earthly. The firms may be meeting the earthly demands. So these firms may be meet. So what Earth demands, these firms may be meeting. Earth is demanding precious metals. So Earth wants precious metals. Let's go back and eliminate here. Um, so does Earth demand? Now they're meeting not offers because they're demanding. Uh, you, you don't claim. You don't claim a demand. Demands aren't claims. No inquiries. No, they're not asking for it. There's definitely it can eliminate down to desires. It's got to be. All right, let's go back up here and we'll keep going here. But like the gold rush pioneers who transform the Western United States, the first space miners won't just enrich themselves. So here's the money thing. They're saying they're going to get rich. They hope to build an off-planet economy free of any bonds with Earth. All right, now here we're going about resources in space in which the materials extracted and processed from the moon and asteroids are delivered for space-based projects. I get the ideas now that, um, okay, but like the gold rush pioneers, so da, 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 they won't just enrich themselves. All right, I get it. In this scenario, water mined in other worlds could become the most desired commodity. There was something about that down here. The space mining could have a positive effect. Uh, something about discussion of water, 35 to 40. Okay, let's see. So I got to get through that a little bit better. Um, in this scenario, water mine from the world could become the most desired commodity in the desert. What's worth more? In a desert, what's for the kilogram? Okay, water's worth more in the desert. I get it. Um, said honeybee robotics. Gold is useless. Water will let you live. Water, ice from the Earth's moons could be sent to the astronauts and International Space Station for drinking or as a radiation shield. Splitting water into oxygen. Where did they get the water? Um, 
Oh, from the moon's poles. That's cool. Into oxygen, hydrogen, make spacecraft fuel. Ice rich asteroids can be interplanetary refueling stations. I'm going to go ahead and answer this now. Is this whole thing about water? The discussion here, okay, was it now? I notice in the possible answers now, I got to consider them or something because this is pretty open ended. It just tells me to pay attention to that discussion. It doesn't really tell me too much about it. Um, but that discussion of 35 to 40 continues an extended comparison. In the oh, in the previous paragraph, notice it's all about the previous paragraph. OK, got it. So let's go see what was in the previous paragraph. There was a thing about um, gold is worthless in the desert. You need water. So it's, it's saying how water will be important, the ways it'll be used. Extends in a comparison and extent. That's not an extended comparison. That's stupid. Provides an honest. No, it's not an unexpected answer. Offers a hypothetical example supporting. Ah, probably that, right? It's telling us, well, they could do this. They could do that. And why? Because water is going to be valuable in space. So I'm uh, going to lean towards C. Examines possible outcomes of a proposal. There's no proposal in the other paragraph. It's just talking about how water will be valuable. Go with C. All right, now we can go down. Um, we had an evidence question here, 44, 43. Indicates that space mining could have a positive effect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and just finish the, the passage. I only have this one paragraph here, which I've already read, so I can go through it quickly. Companies eyeing the iron, blah, 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 blah. All the stuff they're going to do with resources in space, um, space dirt. And I know down here, now I haven't read two, but I know here in my mind, there's a, something that is implicit in passage one. So actually, I can start thinking of this through. There's a point about resources that'll be highly valued in space is implicit, so it's not stated. Now, passage one is fresh in my mind, so let's go through it. There may be re different resources from those that are valuable on Earth. It certainly does say that, right? Uh, I, I guess I'm not sure. Maybe they will be valuable only if they can be. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not talking about harvesting cheaply. So, um, p passage two might. So I just eliminating for passage one right now. They're likely to be primary precious. No, because it talks about water. They may increase in value as those same resources become rare on Earth. It might. I think it said that explicitly. I'm not sure. So I'll consider that. There was something in there about the the they're going to get rich and the value of those things um, within a few decades for some earthly demand such as platinum. Uh, da, 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 they will enrich themselves. But they also help to build an off-planet economy. I'm kind of leaning against that right there. They may increase in value as those resources become rare on Earth. They already are rare, so I'm going to soft eliminate that. I'm thinking that uh, maybe 52 is probably going to be A because since I can eliminate passage one, I'm, I've got A here. Okay, that's the one I think that passage one implies. So now we got that one out of the way. We'll think about it after we read passage two. Let's go on to do this one here which is the indicate space mining could have a positive effect. It's going to be somewhere within here. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and consider the possible answers because um, I didn't see it while I was reading. So let's see. I got 18 and da da da. That's all the way from 18 to 44. That's all the way, all the way down. That's basically the entire passage. Stupid. So um, space mining could yield materials important to Earth's economy. Well, OK, it, it could say that. It could raise the value of some print. No, it's not talking about raising the value of them. It could create unanticipated technological. It does talk about that, right? It could change scientists understanding. No, it doesn't talk about the scientists understanding. So between uh, trying to eliminate down here, I got A and uh, C. It could create unanticipated. I suppose it does. Let's go to the evidence now. So I'm looking for a positive effect. Could be either be yielding materials important to the economy or unanticipated technological innovations. I'm, you know, maybe. I'm leaning towards A here, just, just on the logic of the, the passage and the question, but let's see. So I'm going to go ahead 18 down to 41. Within a few decades, they may da da da, da da da. Yeah, it basically does say that 18 to 22. Within a few decades, it could yield materials important. Yeah, it does do that. So um, I basically got uh, 43 and 44. I've got the answer now. I can eliminate down here, um, but it, the reason I can jump on A here is because it explicitly says that it could yield materials important in the Earth's economy. It does do that. So I'm assuming that these are probably lined up somehow with the wrong answers. Um, and I, I didn't, you know, I, I still can't eliminate C. So let's read on a little bit. And I'm pretty sure there's nothing about technological innovations. 24 to 44. 
but like gold pioneers, that's no about the off-planet economy, any bonds with the earth extract. It's just nothing about new technologies. Um, the scenario mine, water, da da, water from the ice. No, this is not new technologies. It's just talking about what they're going to do with the stuff they know. Da, 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 da. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm pretty good on this one now. Um, it's not about um, new technology. So I'll get 43A, 44A there. Now I finished that. Okay. Um, and can't remember if there's anything here, future space mining. Um, uh, we have to, this is about passage two's views of that. So we'll have to figure that one out from there. So here we go. Now we're going to look for passage two claims that. Space mining has positive potential, but remember how in the title passage two, it said taming the final frontier. That's a really big clue here. The wording of that question. The central claim of passage two is that space mining has a positive potential, but something. So now I know what passage two is all about. And then we got to look for the line hold, and then that's it for passage two. Then we just have to understand the two passages and compare them. Um, now let's go. The motivation for deep. Now I didn't do my skim. I probably could have, but I've got a good sense just by looking at that question and what's going on here. So let's go ahead and just read it. Um, the motivation for deep space mining is shifting from discovered economics. Past years, seen a flurry of proposals aimed at bringing these celestial riches down to earth. No doubt this will make a few billionaires even wealthier. Everybody's getting rich. The gold rush, but. We all stand to gain the mineral bounty. Someone else could be enrich us all, but OK, always pay attention to words like that. But before the miners start firing up their rockets, we should pause for thought. OK, taming the wild, the wild frontier, uh, the new frontier at for the, what is it called? The final frontier. Sorry. At first glance, space mining seems to sidestep most environmental concerns. Maybe there's life on asteroids, no, um, but its consequences both here on Earth and in space could merit consideration. All right, so this is the but. Part of this is about principles. Some will argue space magnificent desolation is not ours to despoil, just as so they argue that our own. Some will argue typical, um, you know, in, in these types of um, uh, rhetorical techniques is you talk about what other people argue. Some will argue that space magnificent desolation is not ours to despoil, just as they argue that our own planet's rules should remain pristine poles. Others will suggest that glutting ourselves on space riches is not an acceptable alternative to developing more sustainable ways of earthly life. Okay, that's what other people may argue. They may or may not um, agree. Let's see. History suggests that those will be hard lines to hold, and it may be difficult to persuade the public that such barren environments are worth preserving. Okay. Um, after all, they exist in vast abundance, and even fewer people experience them that have walked through Antarctica's icy landscape, so whatever. There's also an emerging off-world economy to consider. Okay, the resources that are valuable in orbit and beyond may be very different from those we prize on Earth. Okay, hold on a sec. Wasn't that one of the questions here? <laughs> Bam, I know this is A now, uh, right? What it's explicit in passage two that the resources from are maybe different from those on their valuable on Earth. We just nail that one down there. These resources are valuable in orbit, maybe very different to those we prize on Earth. Questions of their stewardship have barely been broached, whatever that means, and the relevant legal and regulatory frameworks. Ah, here we go. Legal and regulatory taming the frontier. Um, space miners like earthly counterparts are often reluctant to engage with such questions. One speaker at the Space Mining Forum in Australia concluded with a plea that regulation should be avoided. But miners, but miners have much to gain from a broad agreement for the for profit exploration of space. Without consensus, claims will be disputed, investments risking, gains made insecure. It's all in our long term interest to seek to work one out. I can pretty much go after this one now. Um, the central claim down here is that we need to, you know, <clears throat> get consensus on how we're going to go about this. In other words, they want regulations. You'll end up encouraging human entities reckless treatment of the environment. Um, no, there wasn't really. They mentioned that, but it's not about that. Its effects should be OK. This is really kind of, you know, we should be thoughtfully consider taming the frontier. May not and such potential may not include replenishing key. No, it's not talking about that. Experts disagree about the commercial viability. No, they say they're kind of admitting that is. So we use 47, we go straight to B. Oh yeah, the word hold, I skipped that one, 48, hold. Okay, history suggests that those will be hard lines to hold. All right, so what are we we're holding? That's the infinitive verb to hold. What's being held? Hard lines, lines. Which lines? Those lines. Well, wait a minute. Which lines? Those. So those lines has to be these lines. And in these lines, I think are some will argue this and some will argue that and that those lines will be hard to hold. So in other words, to hold them is like to stand up for those lines, I guess. Let's see. 
maintain. Uh, you got to kind of keep a line to be hard to hold. Maybe you don't grip a line for sure. You don't restrain a line, a line being an idea. And you don't withstand a line, so it's got to be a um, maintain a line. OK, now anything else to answer here? We have did all this. Now let's go into the comparison things. Oh, let's finish reading. Kind of did. Which statement best describes the relationship? So two refutes, just no, two doesn't refute. It says yes, but. Two illustrates the phenomenon, and no, it says yes, but. Get rid of those two. Two argues against the practicality. No, it says yes, but. Two expresses reservations. Got to go with that, okay? Um, that's pretty clear. Now here, this is a um, evidence passage, so from somewhere along here, we're going to have something about passage two's response to the discussion of future space mining at 18 to 28. 18 to 28, that discussion is from here to here, talking about, okay, we're going to have um, gold rush pioneers. They're going to all get rich. They're also going to build an off-planet economy for your bonds with Earth, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to see what does passage two say about the rah-rah passage one, that such a future of off planet economy is inconsistent. No, it's they don't argue that will be difficult to bring about an absence of regulations cannot be attained without tech. No, they didn't talk about the technologies seems to certain to affect the in a negative way and then they don't talk about that. So I can just eliminate down to here. It'll be because that's what passage two is all about. Thinking about that main point here. Um, now the evidence for that, I, I think we can jump on the evidence here because um, I was talking about regulations at the very end there. So let's see if that supports it. Um, uh, without consensus claims of dispute investments, risking gains made insecure. Let's see. That is from without to insecure. And then we can check out one to avoid it, 81 to 83 as well. So let's first do without to. OK. All right, they're saying that, yeah. They're all going to be a big old mess unless they, I guess they're talking about we need regulations. It doesn't say it there. But let's see, was, I think it was 80 to 83. Let's see if it talks about regulations there. 81 to 83, one to avoid it. One to avoid it. Um, one speaker said the regulations should be avoided. Um, OK, but that's someone else's opinion, not the authors. But the authors are responding to that. Well, yeah, we should have regulations, so I'm going to go with uh, that one there. We can go back and eliminate these if we wanted to, but I'm pretty sure that this one answers this question here. It'll be difficult to bring about in the absence of regulations. Um, now, the reason why 81 is wrong is because this is someone else's claim, and that evidence doesn't support what passage two would say. So we have to go with this one here. And again, we could eliminate the other ones, but I think you'll see um, that our instinct on this one is pretty strong. Uh, 51 is going to be D, 50 is going to be B, and we've already answered the other ones already. Okay, done. Okay, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? Now, the key to it was to get information from those questions. And as you read, think back and forth to that information because it just it tells you what's going on. There was one of those questions on this passage two. I think it was it was saying that um, uh, the central claim of passage two is that space mining has a positive potential, but that just tells you the whole thing. OK, that's everything you need to know is that word, that little word, three letters, but tells you everything. Look for transition words a lot, please. All right, guys, hope that helps. See you later.